Hey folks, a little while ago I did a video proving that a tree graph with n vertices has to have n minus 1 edges. I'll leave a link in the description if you want to check that video out. I definitely recommend doing so or proving the result yourself if you're not familiar with it because we'll be using it in today's proof. A question I posed at the end of that lesson was, is the converse true as well? If a graph has n vertices and n minus 1 edges, must it be a tree? Now, if you said yes, I wouldn't blame you. I might not even say you're wrong. It could just be that I was deliberately a little unclear in phrasing the question. The thing is, when we go this direction, proving that a tree with n vertices has n minus 1 edges, we are granted that the graph is connected. It's built into the definition of a tree. A tree graph is a connected graph with no cycles. When we go the other direction, connectedness is not built into this assumption by default. A graph with n vertices and n minus 1 edges does not have to be connected. So this is not true as it stands. We can see that quickly with an example. Here's a graph with four vertices, so n is equal to four, and it has three edges, so it's got n minus one edges. Clearly, it's not a tree, because for one, it has a cycle, and for two, it's not connected. And so that's the key feature we're missing. In order to uh, slightly change this statement so it's a true statement, we need to say that G is a connected graph. So let G be A, we'll draw a little arrow, let G be a connected graph with one less edge than it has vertices, then it is a tree. Then we will have proven this characterization of trees, that a connected graph is a tree if and only if it has one less edge than it has vertices. Pretty neat. So let's get in to the proof. Since our graph G is connected, if it also has no cycles, then it's a tree. So let's suppose for the sake of contradiction that it does have at least one cycle. So we'll write that here. Suppose for contradiction, SFC, that G contains at least one cycle. And again, this is our contradiction assumption because if G does not contain any cycles, then it's an acyclic connected graph and thus we're done. The graph is a tree. So we, of course, can't draw an actual example of what this graph might look like because such graphs don't exist. That's what we're going to prove. We're going to show there's a contradiction. But a part of our graph that has at least one cycle might look something like this. So we've got a few vertices and we've got a couple cycles going on there. So our graph, this just might be part of our graph. Part of our graph might look something like this. Now certainly, if our graph has a cycle, like for example, here's a three cycle, we could get rid of the cycle by deleting an edge from the cycle. Anytime we delete an edge from the cycle, the cycle's gone, it no longer exists. Cycles look something like that, right? If you get rid of an edge, the cycle no longer exists. It may be the case that the vertices in the cycle are still part of a different cycle, like in this case, these three vertices were part of this three cycle that no longer exists since we deleted this edge, but the three vertices are still part of a different cycle. But we did get rid of that particular three cycle. So we can get rid of a cycle by just removing an edge from the cycle. So the idea behind the proof is this. If our graph G does contain at least one cycle, then delete an edge from a cycle of G. If it still contains a cycle, delete an edge from one of its remaining cycles. If it still contains a cycle, delete an edge from one of its other remaining cycles, and so on and so on until the graph has no cycles and is hopefully still connected and is thus a tree, and then we'll be able to show that there is a contradiction. So that raises two main questions that we need to clear up. Firstly, are we sure that this process will terminate? Can we remove some finite number of edges such that our graph has no cycles? And then secondly, after we do that, is the resulting graph connected? Now, I think the first of these questions is pretty clear. We're talking about finite graphs. Our graph has n vertices and n minus 1 edges, so it certainly has a finite number of cycles. Suppose it has m cycles, then we'll only need to delete at most m edges in order to get rid of all of the cycles in the graph. Some of the cycles might share an edge, so we might be able to get rid of two, two cycles by just deleting one edge, but at most we'll have to delete 
M edges to get rid of M cycles. So this is certainly a process that will terminate. You know, if we deleted every edge from the graph, it would certainly have no cycles. So we will eventually get rid of all the cycles. So let's just write out a brief summary of what we're talking about. So there's just a brief informal summary of what we're doing. Remove an edge from each cycle of G. So we remove an edge from a cycle, then if it has any more cycles, remove an edge from one of those cycles, and so on and so on until no cycles remain and call the resulting graph T, which of course is a deliberately suggestive name. We're gonna prove that this is in fact a tree. So the other question that remains is after we get rid of all these edges, we're removing edges from cycles of G, is the resulting graph T still connected? We know G is connected, but is T connected? And the answer is yes, which I'll explain with a brief informal explanation and then we'll get slightly more rigorous. We already said cycles look like this. You know, they look like circles and they got some vertices on them. And so there are two ways to get between any two vertices on a cycle. We could go this way around the cycle, or we could go this way around the cycle. So removing an edge from a cycle is never going to disconnect vertices on the cycle. Removing a single edge, it will not disconnect the vertices. We could just go around the other side of the cycle. So certainly, since we're only removing edges from cycles, we're never going to disconnect vertices, so we're never going to disconnect the graph. But to be less wishy-washy about it, if we delete an edge and that disconnects a graph, such an edge is called a bridge. You may be familiar with this already. So if we have a graph like this, deleting this edge disconnects the graph, so that edge is called a bridge. Now as it turns out, an edge is a bridge if and only if it lies on no cycles. And I'll leave a link in the description to my lesson proving that result. Super cool result. Again, an edge is a bridge. That means that deleting it will disconnect the graph if and only if it lies on no cycles. So since we're only deleting edges that are on cycles, we're never going to disconnect the graph because none of those edges can possibly be bridges. We are 100% sure of that. So that means that T is connected because remember, we got from G to T by deleting edges from cycles of G. So T is in fact connected. T is connected. Bada bing, bada boom. I know that writing's a little sloppy. T is connected. So what does that mean about T? Well, T is connected and by definition, the way we got to T, it has no cycles because we removed edges until there were no cycles left in G. So T is a connected acyclic graph. What does that mean, my friends? That means that T is a tree. Kind of a weird way to write that, but T is a tree. So what else does that mean? Well, how many vertices does T have? T has N vertices because G has N vertices and we got from G to T just by deleting edges. We didn't delete any vertices. So T is a tree that has N vertices. And we've already proven, this is the result I mentioned at the beginning of the lesson, we've already proven that a tree graph has to have one less edge than it has vertices. So T has N minus one edges. N minus one edges in our graph T. Now we deleted at least one edge of G to get to T because G has at least one cycle. So we had to delete at least one edge to get to this graph T, which means the number of edges in T is certainly less than the number of edges in G. So N minus one, the number of edges in T has to be less than the cardinality of the edge set of G. But how many edges does G have? Of course, G has N minus one edges as well. So you see the problem. We've just shown n minus one has to be less than n minus one. That's a contradiction which completes the proof. G cannot possibly have any cycles, thus it is a connected acyclic graph. Thus, G is a tree. Thus, if a connected graph has one less edge than it has vertices, it is a tree. And in conclusion, the new characterization of trees that we get a connected graph is a tree if and only if it has one less edge than it has vertices. Pretty sweet. 
All right, now let me just run you back through the ideas of the proof real quick before we go. Let G be a connected graph with N vertices and N minus one edges. If it has no cycles, then we're done. It has to be a tree. So suppose for the sake of contradiction that it has at least one cycle. Then remove an edge from one of its cycles. If it still has cycles, remove an edge from one of the remaining cycles and so on and so on until it has no cycles called the resulting graph T. We know that T is connected because to obtain T, all we did was delete vertices, excuse me, was delete edges from cycles. If edges are on cycles, they're not bridges. So removing them will never disconnect the graph. So T is connected. It has no cycles. Thus, T is a tree. It has N vertices because it has all of G's vertices and we didn't remove any of those. Thus, since it's a tree with N vertices, it has N minus one edges. Since we deleted edges of G to get to T, N minus one has to be less than the number of edges in G, which is N minus one, which is a contradiction. So it turns out G does not have any cycles, so G is a tree. That's the idea of the proof. So I hope this video helped you understand this fun little proof about trees. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions, need anything clarified, or have any other video requests. If you appreciate these lessons on Wrath of Math, I'd really appreciate if you would consider making a small donation on PayPal or a small monthly pledge on Patreon. I'll leave links to those in the description. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time, and be sure to subscribe for the swankiest math lessons on the internet. Okay.